Hey, you're back in the Inference Lounge. I'm here with Davis. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So tell me about the M&A view on OTT, Connected TV, and how data plays a role in all of it. That's where you're coming from. Sure. So um, from the perspective of, of M&A, acquiring uh, entities that focus in content or focus in infrastructure uh, or delivery or the monetization of over-the-top platforms, um, you know, there are, there are a lot of different strategic buyers in the space that, that value different components of the workflow, the delivery in different ways. For all of those businesses, data plays a huge component. Um, it's sort of the underlying um, building blocks of how you inform decisions, how the, the, the technology um, decides one way or another to change behavior. And in terms of uh, sort of OTT and the opportunities, content uh, delivered over the top is to be informed by data is um, sort of the, the, the core opportunity. What really matters to a particular constituency that's watching content um, in that format, right? Yeah, you know, there's a, there's a kind of an old phrase now that data is the new oil. And right. you've spent you know, a good amount of time in the Middle East. I actually wonder if that has a special resonance for you. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand, do you, does that make sense from your perspective? It does. Data, data is, um, it's the oil, it's, it's valuable, um, not because it's scarce, it's valuable because what's manageable and, and the technology that's able to be uh, informed by the manageable components of the data ecosystem is scarce. So um, if you have a proprietary data source, uh, if you are taking a first or third party data source and, and delivering insights, perhaps like as second party data, then that has huge value and it's distinct in terms of it's not available for everybody. It's a resource that can be mined in, in one area. I mean, one theme that's kind of come out of today's conversations as this industry is going through transition, uh, there's many companies forming, there's many people and players that are being disrupted. Um, obviously, M&A uh, plays a big role in that. So like, where do you see the future going? Are we in kind of an era of transition from one thing to the next thing? Or are we just kind of in an era of constant transition where we're never really gonna get a clear picture of the future? Well, I think um, more to the former than the latter. I think uh, it's, it's definitely a hot market. I think things are changing, accelerating at a fast rate. Um, it, it always depends on the constituency, but from the standpoint of the opportunities in the market, I think the major players, so multi-service operators, um, you know, MVPDs, uh, the major enterprise technology companies, they are in a powerful position to essentially make new bets into uh, the democratization, the delivery of content, but also the production of it. Uh, and that is first and foremost informed by an understanding of the user and the data that can be derived to understand what really matters, uh, what's of value to an individual versus how we project value, how we project what's important. Um, there, you're seeing much more uh, emphasis on, on authenticity over the idealized, mm -hmm. so I to speak. I think sometimes it's easier and maybe more fun to think about uh, why companies will fail versus kind of trying to predict why they'll succeed. Right. Um, so from your perspective, um, in OTT, connected television, like what are some things that over the next few years, companies that they don't get X will fail? So I think, um, you know, one way to think about OTT is it's a transition word as we redefine our understanding of what TV means. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a it's a delivery modality. Uh, that's not important, important to a user. Uh, what's important to a user is discovery, uh, relevance, um, you know, they decide what's premium based on what they watch. Uh, I think the, the point solutions, the single pur purpose applications on smart TVs um, that, that have propped up as a, an exploration attempt into what does this new ecosystem mean uh, will go away for more um, curated platforms that aggregate relevant content and do it on the basis of a one-to-one of a -one user. It's, it's this particular day of the week, this is the context, this is the full um, sort of corpus of understanding of, of what I have found useful before and what I might find useful in the future. And therefore, 
uh, this is the sp experience that's being served up versus like the mobile phone application experience of I'm searching through um, millions of options with not a real understanding of what's better or worse or what's important to me. I like what you said about OTT being a transition word because I guess at some point the question is, once that's mature enough, it's like over the top of what? The thing you're going over the top of isn't really isn't going to factor anymore. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. The, um, you know, the delivery is important now in terms of language to understand the differences in infrastructure and monetization, what's possible technologically. Uh, it has impact on the ecosystem players, but ultimately TV for consumer will be a mix of live, VOD, catch-up content, um, it will come from OTT players, aggregators, it will come from you know, cable providers, broadcasters, it will come from individuals that are putting out broadcast content and that's, that is distinctly relevant to a particular constituency. You know, if you're, if you're an individual of influence uh, in, in the market, you don't need a news desk to, to amplify your voice any longer. And of course, for the consumers, all this is kind of like background, foundational stuff for me to just get the content that I want when I want it. That's all I'm going to think about as a consumer, right? Right. As a consumer, you know, the, they're always ahead of the market in terms of immediacy, participation, relevancy, and they don't tolerate mistakes, uh, nor should they. So as we look to wrap this thing up, uh, what are you most excited about for the remainder of 2017? I think that... Um, a lot of the, the usual suspects or traditional companies in the marketplace um, will realize that their, um, their reliance on sort of legacy business systems uh, is not going to be a strategy that allows them to survive even three years or five years. Some of them may have imagined, you know, you know we, have a, we have market share and we've, we've, we don't need to change our strategy. We don't need to have to jump. I think there will be more shocks in the ecosystem in terms of uh, to the degree that we can understand how fast things are moving, it's actually moving much faster. And as more companies realize that, there'll be a lot more activity, and I think that's exciting. Well, Davis, thanks so much for joining me in the Inference Lounge. Thanks for having me, James. And thank you so much for catching this great Inference Lounge content.